Here we are doing the box build for the Kickers uh, L715. This is a fourth order. I haven't done a fourth order before. And it's also going to have curved port, which I haven't done before. So bear with me. There's the top and bottom though. Um, and this big length here to where that rule mark is, is going to be, I've also got to cut it down obviously height wise, but that's going to be the back end side or the kerf. So yeah, it ends up being pretty damn long. Um, but that's because it's still quite a big box. It's nearly seven cubic feet. So what I did, made it, put it on here and I obviously measured it that it was the right length and I cut off the excess. Um, I over, I cut it too big anyway, just so I would have excess. Um, which was about 12 centimeters I worked out, which was almost exactly what I um, worked out. So that's cut off the excess. Um, I can't really bend it here to the right position, but if I put this on the ground, I'll get it close. Something like that. All right, and then we have the kerf um, side, bank, whatever, mounted. Um, so, that's just that now, some glue on it. So what I am going to do to that though is sand it, obviously, once the glue oil dries, and then I'm going to fiberglass that. Now this is the perfect baffle for the sealed section. Um, I've marked it all out, so I'm going to curve around the edges. Now i just got to cut that out with jigsaw, obviously can't do it with a uh, route or anything. Um, so I'm going to cut that guy out, and then I've got double sided tape, so that I can make the next baffle. Um, obviously make it perfect and router it. And then the third one there is my plug for the end. So there we have three baffles, the two for the sub and a spare, all flush trimmed. Um, they're actually all double sided taped together right now. Uh, but they're done, so two baffles are done. And then I've got that spare, um, which I've got to make another one of anyway for my end plug. But um, that's done though, that's cool. So now I can actually get the, the center part of the box put together. Cool, there's the uh, front side. And then that baffle, I still haven't pulled that apart yet, that's just sitting in there, but you get the idea of where the sub is going. Okay, that's the sealed chamber. Pull the chamber. Here's my piece of wood. So, mounted the sub, or put the sub on there, marked out my holes, drawed them all out now, and I'm going to put my T-nuts in. So then I can mount this panel in the box. Um, I've also done a small round over on that inside one, but the big round over on the outside. So. Sub is going to be mounted from the back on this side. It's a nice round over on the way out. About to mount my baffle in there. I've pre drilled all holes through it as well for screws. T nuts. Square. Uh, so this piece isn't actually getting attached to the box. This is going to be like a baffle. And then there's going to be another whole piece that covers the entire end. So this is like a plug. And the whole thing comes off. All right, now I've put a 45 on that side. That's for strength, mainly, in this in because it's in the sealed chamber anyway. This side I've put a rounded curve. Um, obviously, yeah, that obviously not for strength. That's purely just a rounded curve. Um, yeah, so just done that. Um, when I fiberglass this, I'll fiberglass these bits. It's card, but it's a really thick card. Well, it's like six mil, um, and I'll fiberglass just you know make it smooth. Um, I've also got one here which will go on the, um, on the inside of the port. Nice neat silicon job on the in of the sealed section and then also here in the ported I've rounded over that thing too, I've made it nice smooth. Uh, I've also now sanded the entire kerf there and the whole bottom of the box um, so that now when I resin it, it hasn't got you know, lead pencil marks or whatever from my markings. So that gives you a good idea too of the curve. I'm um, in the curve in there as well. So what I'm going to do now is fiberglass the curve. Um, or the curve, should I say. Um, get some nice matting there. There we go. So actually, yeah, I did make enough to do both sides. Resin. Also did the, obviously the... The bit in the middle, what would you call that? The baffle. And just there you can see where they overlaps, two layers of fiberglass on that. And a shitload of resin on that as well. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty confident that's going to be strong enough. We'll see. Obviously, I'm going to wait till it sets. I am going to do a little bit more, obviously, because I'm going to resin uh, the inside of the port and that wall as well, because I'll be putting the half circle in there as well. So I will be doing a little bit more resin. And there we have that mounted. So that. 
there's my plug. There's about a millimeter all the way around that's going to be exposed, like a millimeter gap, um, right? Because obviously, it's still, I need to make sure it actually pushes in. Um, and that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll run a bead of silicon and then flatten it out with my finger all around that. So when it pushes up against the wood, it, it, as I said, it creates a slight of a seal um, all the way around like a gasket. Um, uh, obviously, this is screwed onto here anyway. And this is a pretty straight edge, so it should be tight seal anyway. But this is a precaution. I've added that in there. Port is in and mounted. Um, I've also sanded. I sanded down that edge. I'm going to re-resin over it so it won't look like that anymore. But a um, bit of dust in there and shit. I've just put in that curve um, and siliconed it up. So now I'm just going to resin the port here um, in this curve. I'll resin this side of the port um, as well as the bat, the plug. I'm going to do the inside bit of the plug. Um, may as well if, if I've got some over and I'm going to do the top of the box the plug top of the box the only reason I take that is so that you know when I glue it to the top it's actually gluing to wood um, wood on wood not wood on resin and then there's all that resin inside the port so the tops on and I've taken the plug off just so you can see inside cool all right so now that that's on, I can router all my edges. I'll put the plug back on actually and router it. And also I've got to cut off the corners there so that it's rounded. Because I want it to I want you to actually be able to see that it is curved. Almost six. But we got it done. Sanded. Uh, as I said, I'm not finishing it off, I'm not filling in those holes. I've sanded the whole thing though, so there's no ugly glue marks or anything. Still absolutely covered in dust, but we are done. Uh, the nice rounded edge on it there. Well, not rounded edge, rounded box. Um, the kerf, um, rounded over the port. Then not you're going to see much. It's pretty dark. So what I did here, though, as you can see, is I, I did a thick bead of silicon all the way around, and then I got a card and and kind of wiped it up. So it's on a slope, the silicon, as you can see. So that when I put it on, it forms a gasket around here. It should be a quite a, an airtight seal. Obviously, all of this is still screwed on. So this normal flat panel, and this is my plug to seal her up. And then we have the sub mounted. I do realise that mounting it this way means I won't be able to smell the coil burning if it if it is. Um, but I designed it all for it to be mounted the other way. So this is how it's going to be. When we are wired up, positive on that side comes around a positive to the terminal negative round to the negative these terminals are pretty cool actually you can enter from both sides so I ended up managing to get double eight gauge in which is pretty awesome I did trim it a little but not bad eh? there we have that on so as you can see pulled it pretty damn close the screws I don't want to over tighten them and strip them so um, yeah as the glue, the join's not obviously going to be seamless because it hasn't got glue in it or anything. There's no silicon or glue in this join. Um, it's just screwed and then, as I said, the actual real seal is around here where I've made the gasket. Alright, so 8 gates coming out of the box, into the crescendo there. Uh, will be actually a 2 ohm. Um, I've just got a DD1 at first. There's me two little metal black L brackets I put on the box, which once I push the box back I'll be screwing down. Um, and there's my curve. I'll just jump out. <sighs> Alright, and there we go in the car. It's still pretty friggin' big. It's not small by any means. It's smaller than the other one, but it still takes up the whole boot. Here is the box in the car fitted. <laughs> Sound like fucking Steve O. <laughs> yeah, dude. Alright, um, so. That's, that's it, very simply fitted in there. Um, Alright, so I am going to play it for you now. I didn't want to end the video about playing it. There's not much to show you, but you can't see any woofer flex. The car doesn't flex that much off it. I mean, it is only 115. So, I'll play it a little. It does play pretty well, but uh, yeah. Um, it plays some low 20 hertz, like 24s. Um, hits from about 28 to 34. Um, Keith's going all right to about 40, and from about 45 down, it starts to drop off. But Twenty-eight 
26 hertz. Yeah. But yeah, that 26 hertz there, and it plays that comfortably. It's not bottoming out, it's not um, just moving air, you can actually play that easily. So, for that reason, I'm pretty happy with it, and I will be finishing the box off. So, in an upcoming video, I'll be painting it or something or other. So, um, yeah, but for now though, it's built and that's it.